Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Tyworm, and today I want to bring you my first ever last epoch build of a lich, an acrylic lich. So we're just going to go through the skills I picked, the skill specializations and the passive tree. I'll show you some of the gear and we'll finish it off with one round of the monolith. So the idea of this build rests on a few foundations, but mostly Harvest, because Harvest is my main damage source in the build, either in Reaper form or in my regular form. And Harvest, which is this one, right, it just does a shit ton of damage by now, and that is because of a pretty high attack speed, and also because I put a bunch of points in Intelligence, and if you look at the tooltip over here of Harvest, you can see that you gain one melee necrotic damage per point of intelligence and that is just your base necrotic damage everything skills off of that so this is very very uh, worthy of getting so intelligence is really good in this build which you will also see once we start talking about the passive and the active skill trees so first diving into the skills let's go to well our main skill first i suppose which is harvest I've been experimenting a lot with all of these different skills, but I uh, in the end decided that I wanted to go for a full necrotic damage build. So I took the 100% chance to shred necrotic protection and I convert all added damage to necrotic damage. We'll come to that because this is important. Um, I did a little bit of heal, uh, increased area. You could go for 80% over here and then not take the heal, but I think uh, heal for one health per point of intelligence. We're going for intelligence anyway, so I like the life eater here. 9% um, crit and then uh, round it off with damage bonus to marked targets, which is marked for death, right? Is increased by 91%. So you will also see a huge difference between a marked target and a not marked target. I do roughly three to four times as much damage. I'll specifically dive into this one health per point of intelligence and also the added damage. Because if you go to my gear, you can see for example that this weapon, which is a decent weapon, has melee physical damage and 23% melee fire damage. And all that damage is added as now necrotic damage. So it converts all these damage types into necrotic damage, which then starts scaling off of all the necrotic bonuses which is really good. Then diving into the mark for death skills, this is not a super eventful one, but the main thing you want is that you have cursed enemies minus 175 necrotic protection. You have them inc taking increased damage. I went for the increased area that I, I just found that very useful. I tried to chill, I tried the terror, I tried the imposing ghoul, but none of those things really worked. Uh, they're, they're just not really great added effects. So in the end, I just uh, went with the lingering curse, increasing the duration of the actual curse, which is mainly nice for like longer fights, boss fights, that kind of thing. Then we have the hungering souls. Uh, I really like this ability and I have also experimented with this. I went also with the isolation route for a little bit but for this build that doesn't really work um, so I decided to go with the ravenous once again base necrotic damage because it's just so good and then I went this whole passive route so vengeful souls the lich skin meaning that you can't uh, cast it anymore this skill but it will actually proc as you get hit and because we're basically a melee class with our harvest we're getting hit quite a bit and you're gonna see that in the gameplay footage afterwards. So you increase the chance over here, you increase the chance over here. Here's just additional skulls and here is yet more additional skulls. You could argue that you wanna put these two points maybe in life hunt. You can, you can mess around with that a little bit. Also, I have the necrotic pack which calls forth two fewer skulls but deals 30% increased damage. These things do also some life leech and uh, they skill with necrotic damage and intelligence once again. So those are my main stats. And then we have the Wandering Spirits and the purpose of these Wandering Spirits is not so much damage, but the purpose is that these Wandering Spirits are providing me two things. Uh, they're providing me with wards, which comes from this, right? Sheltering Spirits. Whenever a spirit expires, you gain nine ward and they do reduce damage, but that's fine. They don't really do damage anyway. Then I have that they spawn for five more seconds. 
because that just means that there are a lot more spirits on screen which means in turn that i get a lot more ward from these spirits and if i start if i keep using this uh, off cooldown basically i run around with roughly 100 to 150 ward something like that which is just pretty decent i did some cooldown recovery i have them last a little bit longer because i wanted the cooldown recovery so i can cast them more often and it reveals them more frequently spawning more spirits and then the last but not least is my actual reaper form the actual lich you could say also here i tried a lot of things i went into a more like tanky route over there because here this makes you a lot more tanky i tried a poison addition and uh, at some point i ran around with like a hybrid poison necrotic build but that was just very inefficient because you have to sort of like uh, distribute your resources as well you're going for both poison damage and necrotic damage and that is not a great idea i found I, I found it at least very hard to gear for something like that so i decided to not do that anymore not go that route instead go for additional necrotic based damage because it helps so much uh, increased area I have a little bit more damage the less health I have and because you're slowly losing health this this starts to add up uh, this is also increased damage and increased attack and cast speed all of these have found extremely useful and my reaper form has a strong emphasis on doing damage it doesn't really do much else but that is why I have all these other skills so taking a look at the passives a few things are very important with the passives and that is that I want if at all possible like bonuses to necrotic damage I want flat intelligence because it boosts my flat melee necrotic damage from harvest and here and there maybe some protection or something but mainly those two things and if at all possible attack speed because the faster i swing my weapon the faster i can do this with harvest so what i took here is the forbidden knowledge eight intelligence because that's just good to have uh 20 attack speed and it applies to you as well if you have summoned a minion in the past 10 seconds and this is exactly why we have the wandering spirits right if i attack and i summon these guys see you see me attacking a lot faster and now these guys start expiring and you see the ward go up, right? 60, 70, 80, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. I can cast these guys relatively quickly. And this is the idea. So you just keep casting these guys. They will provide you tons of wards. And a ton of attack speed as well. So you're, you're running around with like 200 ward if you do this correctly. And if you're not getting hit. And you're attacking very, very fast. We have our uh, and our minions increased health regeneration, which is kind of nice because of the uh, Lich drains a lot of health. And then we go to the actual Lich build over here. And uh, you will see basically the same uh, logic. We do some health and spell damage leads to health. I think that's quite important. We have 16 intelligence and reduced health regeneration. We have 60% increased necrotic damage. What else is nice over here? We took a few points in increased spell damage and flat intelligence because I needed to put them in something and everything else was really not worth it. Um, increased crit chance and increased attack speed. This is an awesome note for us. We do 10 out of 10 additional necrotic damage, which is a total of 20 additional necrotic damage with spells and melee attacks. So that is just a huge boost to basically every necrotic spell and all our spells are necrotic. We have more increased attack speed and more health leech. And I have started building on the uh, mind over body node. 6 out of 20. But this you can completely fill up if you want to. And go all the way up to 40 additional intelligence. With once again the drawback of losing health per second. But that is mitigated quite a bit by um, some of the other nodes that we have. And finally here, for example, this is one of those nodes. We do 5% damage leeches health and we have increased health leech. A few important things here once again is the amount of intelligence you have, your attack speed. Health leech is very important too. And keep summoning your spirits for some ward and other protection. And everything else is basically automated. You don't need to worry about the hungering souls. They take care of themselves the reaper form you can just go in and it's basically an additional layer of protection because once you exit reaper form uh, you don't die 
but you just respawn back in your regular form with full health, which is good. So let's have a quick look at some of the main stats and my items. The only unique I still have left is this one, the Decayed Skull. 80 armor in total, but more importantly, 80% void and necrotic damage. This is a huge buff for me and it's, it's providing armor this and also a little added bonus of me taking void and necrotic damage as physical damage, which is sort of okay. Here the amulet has necrotic damage and attack speed on it and additional attack speed. This is just a general like protective sort of uh, shield. It's pretty bad. It's only got 50 armor and uh, this is one I still need to replace. My weapon does a good amount of base damage. It's relatively fast. You want a fast weapon because you want to swing as often as you can with harvest because of the life leech for example does increase necrotic damage so this is a pretty nice weapon this is a more protective kind of belt it's not the greatest because it still has my damage over time in here and this is another health leech ring with some flat intelligence on it which is good here a crit strike multiplier i'm not too happy about this but it is still pretty good increase necrotic damage intelligence once again the boots tier 5 intelligence which is great uh, fire, cold and lightning protection are pretty good. Void necrotic poison currently a little lacking maybe, but uh, we'll take care of that whenever we craft some more items. So that's roughly the build guys. Let's jump into the monolith and see what happens. So we will start summoning these guys. And we're just gonna keep this up basically. You can see the hungering souls, you can see the you can see the buffs, you can see how much damage we do to everything around here, which is just pretty insane if you ask me. And normally speaking, you would be in lich form, so you would do something like this, go in lich form, and just keep summoning your spirits so you have your increased attack speed, making everything a lot easier over here. You will slowly lose health over time, but because we have such an insane amount of health leech, it doesn't really matter as long as some point in time you still see someone. And here you see the difference, right? If I'm not cursing them with Mark for Death, I am roughly doing like 3.5% less damage. So if I just hit these guys, I crit for 1000-ish, right? But then if I mark them... I crit for like 3400, 4000-ish. I have been having so much fun with this build. Because you do a shit ton of damage. It's health leech all over the place. Like there's really not that much you need to do. At some point you're gonna run out of this leech form. Which is sort of okay. Like it's not a huge issue. And and here you start seeing also what, what all these skulls are, are up to, right? Like these skills are gonna be all over the place as soon as you just stand there and basically take damage. And it's really not much more than this, it's just cursing them, keeping your spirits up, literally and figuratively I suppose. You can go in a lich form basically anytime, doesn't really matter. And the biggest challenge is basically pressing R every now and then so that you're sure that you still have like wandering spirits running around. But that's really all of it. It's, there's not much more you need to do. But yeah guys, that's the build. I hope you had uh, fun and I hope you found it informative. I'm by no means an expert on this game. I did however do a fair bit of experimentation in uh, several of these skills. And I found this to be just a very, uh, very workable combination of skills of gear of passives and um, yeah it turned out really really well i think quite a bit of damage a good sustainability also in the reaper form yeah i'm very happy with this build so guys if you have any questions just put them in the comments and uh, i want to thank you so much for watching any other feedback please feel free to provide that to me and i will see you pretty soon for the next build which is probably going to be an undead necromancer with the new skills for summon skeleton and summon skeleton mage i can't wait guys bye bye thanks for watching